resentment, all that anger. It just makes you play better. Oh, my. What a game. What an atmosphere. How come in Fale Dante doesn't jump center? They got Nate Biddle, who is taller, jumping against Adem Bona. They actually played together at Prolific Prep in Napa. High school teammates, along with Mohamed Gay and Trey White. That was a good high school team, although they lost in the final four of the national tournament. Here's Tiger Campbell, the floater, missed it, and Dante with the rebound. UCLA at 20 and 4, 11 and 2 in conference play, its best start since 2008. Oregon at 15 and 10, but a couple of key players, including one of the starters, Jermaine Kuznard, with did not ball, play. Yeah, he didn't play in the first meeting. He was hurt early in the year. As Keyshawn Bartholomew was hurt as well. So two of the top eight players for Oregon didn't play the first two months of the season. So that will help Oregon's cause in the eyes of the selection committee as Bona commits the foul on Dante. Foul trouble in this big man matchup here. You got it finally Dante from Mali. Yeah, the first great African empire. And now you got a, basically the first possession, you've got a substitution. Yeah, it's interesting because Mick Cronin said, look, you cannot get in foul trouble. He told the Dembona tonight, <laughs> you can't get in foul trouble. We well. can't put Dante at the line. And he gets his first foul less than a minute in. And he's getting pulled already for Kenneth Nuba. If you're refereeing this game, just let him go. Let him play. If the, if the foul... It's a contact which there's going to be on every play. If it impacts the result, then blow the whistle. Dante missed the second one. He's the 65% foul shooter. But this is Dante Bona. That's Nigeria versus Mali. Here's Bailey missing the three. And a foul called here now on Nuba. Two quick fouls on the Bruin centers. And the Bruin faithful that have traveled loyally up here to the end of the Oregon Trail. What a day it was here. Spectacular sunshine, rainbows, glistening, the drip, 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 still lingering from the ever-present rain. No drought in Western Oregon. I was on a plane and in a car. That's, that's all I know about today. Oh, my two favorite things. <laughs> Shot clock inside of 10. They go to Dante attacking new, but puts it in. This, this is what great coaching this is what a great. And here's the press by the Ducks. They can only get into it when they score. These two teams have the best press. Presses in the conference of champions. Here's Jalen Clark down to Nuba, and they're going to call a foul here on Richardson. Key players picking up. Meaningless, senseless. Mick Cronin, who's done so much at UCLA in a short time, but he has not won here in Eugene. The last time UCLA won here was four years ago. A Sweet 16 and a Final Four for UCLA. And who knows, maybe a national championship in 2023. They certainly have enough talent on this roster to do that. And Bill, they won the other night. And it's an Oregon State team that had a good win today against USC. They won without Jaquez and Campbell being their top offensive players. That's good news going forward potentially for UCLA. Have you ever been on a team? You think it's just about stats and numbers and guys just coming out in automatic and automatic. Oh, goodness. That soars with the three, and it's 6-0 Ducks to start the game. This is the way the Ducks played against Arizona when they blew Arizona out. By the way, Stanford has beaten Arizona. So, right now, Arizona is two games back of UCLA for the top spot. Dante with the slam, 8 nothing. Doing exactly this. The ball goes 94 feet, never touches the ground. Waldo soars in perfect position. What a critical component, and this pit crew, and they are fired up. The band was playing... Leo Young rocking in the free world, and they haven't sat down yet. Here's Bailey. Back out to Tiger Campbell, who is just nine points per game over his last five. Uh, there you are, playing a fantasy basketball for money again. Yep. Not a good idea. Just try for the win, please. Have you seen the new Bill Russell Netflix film? Shot clock at three. Hawkins with one. He passed it. 
instead of shooting it, he didn't know how much time was on the shot clock. He did point to himself and say, that's my bad. But a rough start for UCLA. But the great thing about this, this arena, this venue, this crowd, is that when you're playing, you can't hear a thing. The only thing that's missing here is there's not a cemetery across the street like there was at Matt Court for the losing team. Is that where you spent the last weekend, sleeping in the cemetery? I did. I didn't sleep, though. Kuznard missed the three. Can only imagine what you were doing awake in a cemetery. I was dodging forces of evil. Biddle called for the foul, pushing. There have been so many ill-advised fouls here. Fouls are precious. Please, save them. I mean, Nate Biddle is 7-2, highest rated recruit in the history of the University of Oregon. Phenomenal talent, playing better than ever. They just took him out, put Quincy Gurrier in, and he'll be charged with defending Hawkins. Yeah, he'll guard anybody and everybody. Perrier is boldly refreshing in every way. <laughs> and sparkling numbers on the year, too. <laughs> the bottle is uncapped. <laughs> Clark, oh! <laughs> knifing through defenders, count the basket, and a foul. Jalen Clark, who's played really well all season long on both ends of the floor, maybe the best two-way player in the Pac-12. There are some very tall teams in the Conference of Champions, USC, Arizona. This Oregon team is as tall as they get. Emblematic of the tall first, the first NCAA championship team. Laddie Gale, one of the stars there, enshrined in the Basketball Hall of Fame. And to your point, they bring Kalal Ware in another seven-footer and take Dante out after he picked up the foul. They got How many fouls on Dante? Just one. Three on Oregon as a team. Clark, 70% free throw shooter, but missed the opportunity there at the three-point play. First points of the game for UCLA. They came three and a half minutes in. Will Richardson cannot wait for the game to come to him. He's got to, he's got to try to take over and get to the hoop, get to the foul line. This Bruin, that's an offensive foul. Bailey pulled the chair out and then comes away with the basketball. Please don't do that to me. That's why I have three of them. <laughs> You're sitting on your gilded throne of three chairs tonight. Looking for the rainbow and the bright, beautiful back cut. And that was Clark with the pass. Hawkes with the basket. Oregon's going to extend defense. And that's going to require the Bruins to have a guy flash up and back cut off the ball so you can penalize that defense who's going to gamble there. Gary A with the rebound off the missed three by Richards in his first shot attempt of the game. Soares driving, got stripped, and then he touched it last. You see the end of the regular season. We will be in Vegas for the Pac-12 tournament after that. Las Vegas, please. You never say Meadows. You say the Meadows here. But Oregon, in the game that they lost at UCLA, they did not have Nate Biddle. They did not have Jermaine Kuznard, and they did not have Key Bartholomew. You can't take three of your best players off the roster and expect to win. Now everybody's healthy and they're playing great basketball and that's continuing, but the Bruins have a way of just making it into a grinder of a game and then winning at the end. They lead the conference in scoring defense as Bailey knocks down the jumper. In fact, they're in the top 10 in points allowed, just 59 points per game given up on the season. What Amari Bailey gives this team is offensive firepower by himself. He doesn't need any plays. He doesn't need any screens. All he needs is the ball. It's his fifth game back today after that left foot injury. His 18th game played on the season out of 26. Here's Ware. Been playing better the last week or so. But he Great defense fires on the by turnaround. Kenneth Nuba, though. Kalel Ware, he can get whatever he wants against this Bruin front line. He shouldn't be afraid to turn and face. His game is skill and mobility. Here's Bailey again, knocking down the mid-range jumper, and the game is tied at eight. So Bailey right now is the go-to guy on offense. Freshman from Chicago, finished up at Sierra Canyon, was a McDonald's All-American. Four years over the top. Throw down. That's, that's where. That's Will Richardson. Where's where? Somebody better find him. But that's why Will Richardson is so great. Second in the conference of champions in assists. Hawk has got his own miss. Kirk Kreese is number one there. We don't know what happened there today in Stanford. 
Had a foul called on Gurrier. Yeah, again, didn't watch the games. Obviously, we were getting ready for this one, but Tubelis only took two shots in that game. Had only four points, so. But the beautiful basketball of movement. Don't try to go right up against your man in a one-on-one -on -one confrontation. And with Will Richardson and Tiger Campbell setting the tone of this game, nice runner. And it's good for Campbell. So the first basket of the game for Tiger Campbell. What a crowd here tonight. Tinker's here. Dave Fry, Rob Cross, Jim Smith, Pat and Stephanie Kilkenny. Rob Mullins, the athletic Rob director. Mill. I didn't see Big Stoner. Is he here? Kuznar blocked by Bona. Big Stoner's across the street. They got some great exhibits over there he's working on. Here's Bailey. Tough shot. And Bona, lucky he didn't get called for another foul there. Whoa. But Oregon <laughs> throws it into the first row. <laughs> Thought he saw Ken Kesey over there. <laughs> Ken was busy downtown at the Kesey Square next to Voodoo Donuts and le lecturing to the children. You were talking to statues again today, weren't you? Yes. Uh, <laughs> were they talking back? <laughs> yes. <laughs> was Willie Nelson when we were in Austin? Were you there that day? And I, I don't know. <laughs> I just remember you took your shirt off. That's all I remember at Austin. Foul called here on Biddle and didn't look like a great call. Hawk has leaned in, maybe initiated the contact. That's two on Biddle and but five why, on Oregon. Why is Nate Biddle going for head fakes well, on a guy that he's got six inches on? And that's what Dana Altman was not happy. He wasn't happy with, it wasn't about the refs. He was mad at Biddle because how many times have we seen coaches and shoot arounds this year say, don't go for high base pump fake? <laughs> exactly. Because Hawk has mastered that. As a shot blocker, your goal is not to block the shot. Your goal is to make him miss the shot and then have your team or yourself get the rebound. Now Biddle's going to have to go sit down. I don't understand why guys can't play with two fouls in college basketball. It could be because the coach is upset with him, and so... Uh, yeah. Yeah. But you, you can't stymie enthusiasm, aggressiveness... But it's different when you play. The only reason Coach Wooden was upset with you was it had nothing to do with basketball. No. So because I didn't want to cut my hair or shave or wear the clothes <laughs> right. he wanted me to wear. He, went, he didn't like the fact that I didn't want Nixon to be president but, or that we were fighting in Vietnam. My, my, uh, my point <laughs> is this is, didn't mean for you to go on a diatribe. The point is, though, that great closeout Singleton. These other guys he's getting upset with because of basketball. That's why he keeps taking them out. Also wanted to get Dante back on the floor. Bona cutting off the driving lane. Now the challenge for Dante is to keep it going. He had a great start. Shot clock at three. Perrier bubbling. Oh, put the cap back on it, please. It was 8 nothing to start this game. Oregon, so right now a 12-2 run over the last four and a half minutes for the Bruins. Yeah, you'd called this game over early on. Now the Bruins have fought back as they always do. Singleton fouled from behind by Kuznard. 16 fouls already, although Dana unhappy. You don't see Dana get that hot at the officials very often. Dana Altman is fantastic. Can't believe he's not in the Hall of Fame already. 25 consecutive winning seasons. There's only three active coaches that have done that. Dana Altman's one of them. The other two are Bill Self and Tom Izzo. And they're both in the Hall of Fame. Deservedly so. Singleton, 89% free throw shooters. There's going to be contact on every play, and that, that's a foul. And, and, but that's a foul? Kuznard has got to realize you're not going to block that shot. But didn't he block it? It looked like he maybe got part of the hand, but the hand's on the ball. He came all the way across his body. Please, let me do that to you in the TSA line. <laughs> oh, you, you're not flying. Uh, you'll be, we won't be in the TSA line, will you? <laughs> I'm the luckiest guy in the world. <laughs> David Singleton, fourth career threes made in UCLA history, only behind Pooh Richardson, number one. Will Richardson missed the shot, no relation to Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Pooh was fantastic. 14 to 2 run right now. Oregon has gone cold, but again, UCLA is so good defensively. Hawkins, there's that pump fake. Dante didn't fall for it. And into the game is Dylan yeah. Andrews. <laughs> and a foul called on McClendon of UCLA. One right there. It's uh, quite an honor, quite a privilege. And 
The women's game is so beautiful and wonderful. And the Conference of Champions well represented in the top 25. I believe there's six Conference of Champions teams in the top 25 women's basketball. UCLA is ranked 18th in the women's poll, 7th on the men's side, and a 14-2 run as the defense has stepped up, although Bowman just picked up his second foul. So the two centers for UCLA each have two fouls. So if, you're, if you're Dana Altman, attack the rim. Uh, Kenneth Nuba coming right back in. I was chatting with him about his hair today. And I asked him how many different colors he has in that hair. He said it started as one, but as it fades, it turns different colors. I need some of that. Great play by Hawk is getting the steal. Oh, he blew the layup on the other end. Singleton in traffic got the rebound, but he stepped out of bounds. Hawk has made a terrific play on one end. You don't see him miss layups usually. Jaime is not the type of player who's going to elevate and throw it down. I mean, he can do that, but it, he was thinking about the defense coming from behind him. Jaime on track with 14 more points starting tonight to become one of the top 20 scorers and top 20 rebounders in the history of UCLA basketball. And his rebounding numbers have skyrocketed. He's going down 37 in the last three. Another UCLA foul. Let's see if it's on Nuba. It's a three-point chance. It is on Nuba. That's three on him and Dante to the line. Beautiful back cutting and the interior passing and finally trying to get his balance there. He missed the game against Colorado not too long ago. He tweaked his knee, which was surgically reconstructed a number of years ago. But remember when he, he first got here and he wrote that incredible letter to his mom thanking her for all her sacrifice? I mean, this guy, I know not everybody has the privileged uh, silver spoon life that you led and path to the top to get here. Mac Etienne, by the way, is coming into play center now because the other two guys have two fouls. But the other thing about Infali Dante, you have to love. You mentioned the game that he missed. Well, the, they won that game without him, so he told Dane Altman, you know, the guys played so well without me. Let me come off the bench. Let those guys start. I'll come off the bench as he sends it into the third row. <laughs> Another rejection for one of the top shot blockers in the Pac-12. And finally, Dante's appreciation, respect, admiration for where he came from and where he is today. And that emotional letter to his mom. It, it's out there on the internet. Just check it out. Change your life forever. You've told the story many times, too, about you know, eating peanut butter going up because that's that's what they had. That's all they had. That's how his mom kept the family together. His dad died when he was very young. David Singleton out of bounds. It's loud in here. Midway point of the first half. <laughs> Mick Cronin's made 100 substitutions already. Uh, now he's going back to Bailey and taking McClendon out but keeping Mac Etienne in the game because Noob has got three fouls. Bonus got two. The amazing thing is UCLA's winning this game. Right. <laughs> What's the record for the most number of fouls called at Matthew Knight Arena <laughs> on Pat Kilkenny Court in the first 10 minutes? Oh! Whoa. Missed <laughs> attempt there. And now an Oregon foul. I mean, that's the thing with UCLA. There's five fouls. Just they've all been on the centers. And now, but, but that's what you want if you're Oregon. There's seven fouls on Oregon. So you got UCLA shooting a one and one as Luke War picked up the foul, his first. So Jaquez at the line, 72% on the season. He's seventh in the league in scoring, fourth in rebounding, fourth in steals, first team all Pac-12 last year. And he will be again this year. But don't measure these Bruins by their stats. This is not a stat team. Let's take a look at our ACC Big 12 Super Tuesday doubleheader. Duke Notre Dame kicks us off at seven, and Kansas ranked ninth right now, taking on Oklahoma State, which is a bubble team. ESPN on the app on Tuesday. I love the app. I live on the app. Where is where is uh, Kentucky and Duke and North Carolina going to end up in the tournament? It's going to be really interesting with those three teams. When's the last time all three? <laughs> well, they're double teams. They're in. Don't worry. 
the call has been made. Yeah, that along with your 10 of the 12 Pac-12 teams are no, going to get nine. in. Please, accuracy important. Richardson hits a three. Will Richardson gets the Ducks back within one, his first points of the night. That's what separates Will Richardson from all the other great point guards in the Conference of Champions. What I want from Will is for him to come out every game and play that. Bailey, baseline cut off. Kuznard, and it went off of Clark. Kuznard deflected it. Clark touched it last, though, and it's Oregon ball. One thing that the Ducks have been able to do here, even though they're still trailing, is that they've kept Jalen Clark in check. Jalen Clark, for vast stretches of this season for UCLA, he has been their best player in every way. Is that a deflection? You know, you talked about Clark being, in a lot of ways, their best player. He leads the conference in steals. He's a really good offensive player, excellent rebounder. Oh, and he's just indefatigable. He never gets tired. He goes all out on every possession. Does everything. Beautiful pass. Luke War wants no part of that ball that far from the hoop. Kuznard, and he'll go to the line. Kuznard, we mentioned, didn't play in the first meeting. He was hurt. Was a three-year starter at South Carolina before transferring to Eugene. Jalen Clark picks up his first foul. Have you heard anybody ever tell you that it all rolls into one? I have. This is one Oregon. person. One this person. is Oregon UCLA, right? Kuznard at the line. Kuznard's high school basketball coach. A UCLA legend, a two-time champion, 73 and 75. UCLA's last two championships in the Wooden Era. Pete Turgovich, East Chicago, Indiana. What a player. What a spiritual force of nature. And to have him as your high school coach, oh my. And Kuznard is a critical component here. He hasn't done much here today, but this guy can fill it up. He's a big-time scorer, and like Amari Bailey, he's hungry. He's determined, and he, he, he wants it. He's not shying away from the bright lights. That's his first point, and he ties the game at 16. Oregon, again, led this game 8-0 to start. Here's Clark soaring to the basket and getting it. Great clear out by Mac Etienne, who just kept getting bigger and bigger. Etienne, a redshirt freshman from New York who missed last year with a knee injury. He's not played a ton, but getting extended first half minutes with the other two bigs in foul trouble, Nuba and Bona. Leaning in is Richardson. Tough shot. Ware missed it the first time, but gets the stick back. Nick Cronin, who has rebuilt the spirit and the pride and the loyalty, the appreciation of this incredible historic program, he's got nothing out of his centers today. And they're tied. Here's Bailey. Tried to fire it underneath off the fingertips of that Conference of Champions loses to another Conference of Champions opponent. He says they're both terrible, and that's just unacceptable. First of all, truck stops have nothing to do with bracketology. No, that's, how I, you, that's how I identify uh, these places. Why are you calling no Joel and Artie a troll? <laughs> that's just unkind. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> He either doesn't pay his cable bill or he goes to bed before the games are over. Alley oop attempt broken up. Tough pass. And a foul called on Oregon. So it's going to be a one and one on the other end because that's 18 fouls. A beautiful sideline out of bounds play. Out of the timeout. They ran that play. USC Thursday. They run it a lot. But when you have a big man coming off a screen and you can jump like in Folly Dante can. Whoa. So Hawkins at the line, he's just one for five from the floor, but he's four of four at the free throw line. This guy looks so much like, like Sean Penn. It, it's uncanny. Gets the bounce on the free throw tomorrow afternoon before the Super Bowl. We talked about that great women's game on ESPN. Over on ABC, Ja Morant. And the Memphis Grizzlies against Jason Tatum and the Celtics, who lead the East. Coverage starts 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Pacific time. How about the trades in the NBA? Goodness. Yeah, I was going to ask you, who do you think, you, with Kevin Durant going to Phoenix, are they the team to beat now? Well, they are a team to beat. You know, Kevin's got to play. There's it over the top again. And another 
one that fails. They have not been able to connect on that very often tonight. Two trades that I really enjoyed was Jay Crowder going to Milwaukee. That's going to be very beneficial for the hottest team in the league. And then Matisse Feibel coming home to the Northwest. He'll help Portland out tremendously. <laughs> now, how come that little bump? But they so, call that. Hold right? on, hold on, wait a second. And finally Dante is getting hammered, and they call that a so, foul, please. You just, of all the trades, you just pointed out that, that nothing against Matisse Thibel, but that trade, that, that's bigger than no. Durant? That's no, bigger, it's not bigger than the Laker trades, the Clipper moves? Okay, well. It's just because he played at Washington in the Pac-12 that you're bringing that up. This is a Conference of Champions broadcast. <laughs> oh, rare miss by... <laughs> Matisse Thibel, I, I can't believe Philadelphia gave him up, man. That guy can play basketball. But he wasn't really in the rotation. Well. Here's Richardson driving. Gets deep into the paint and the bounce. Oregon in front by one. The Bruin big men, such as they are tonight, they're having to stay home with Dante. And that's just going to allow wide open lanes for Will Richardson. There's a lot of trades that went down that will impact everything, including what happened in Dallas. Sad that Gary Payton, the second or third, is the second. Okay, is, is out with an injury. Amari Bailey with the basket. Richardson, that time the alley oop. They're able to connect with Dante putting it in. After all these years, you finally learned that that's a pass off the board, and that's what you want to do. You're coming down. To your left, they can't they can't stop his going left. Great collapse by Key Bartholomew. Clark, floater, baseline, spins out, rebound, Dante. Strength, power, position, patience. Dante's got it all. More peanut butter. Bartholomew for three. So Dante is controlling the glass with seven rebounds and nine points. They're so worried about him. Now you're getting shooters open on the perimeter, and Bartholomew gives Oregon a four-point lead. The way he runs the floor, I mean, this, it's incredible. I mean, this is evolution. You know, tomorrow is Charles Darwin's birthday. Campbell, no. Did you ever read that book we gave you? I've read it many times. Okay. Here comes Richardson. Great crossover by Will Richardson. So smooth. What's frustrating about Will for me is that you know, we see it, and once we see it, we want it every game. Perrier! Oh! Well, Perrier is his name. He's given us license. So has Joe already given you license to call him a troll? That's what I want to know since you're defaming him. As that pass intended for Clark went off his fingertips out of bounds to Oregon. Accuracy is a defense. <laughs> Not sure what that has to do with what I just asked you, but Joe doesn't take my calls. I wonder why. <laughs> Inside five minutes to play here in the first half. Okay, so how come when Purdue loses, that <laughs> Purdue loses to Indiana, no, no, no. then like nothing happens to him? Well, it's just not true here. Etienne commits the foul his first. He's played a lot of minutes here in the first half. Kentucky loses, North Carolina loses, Duke loses, nothing happens that's to not, them. That's Please. not true. That's, so okay. here's where he's got the Pac-12 right yeah, now. The, the, the scientific accuracy. Okay. So to your point, you say USC lost today to Oregon State. Guess what? Nothing happened. They were last four buys this morning. They're still last four buys. Joe has not updated. No, it is updated. He sent out the email. Check your phone. Still has Oregon first four out. Arizona State under consideration. Okay, a lot of games USC left. and Oregon throw out the first two-thirds of the season. Their key players are not there. USC has two major injuries right now. Joshua Morgan, ankle. Reese Dixon Waters learned it. Good Three job. Games. Yes. He's out with a, a foot injury. I mean, you can't take players out and just substitute somebody else in there, please. And Folly Dante, by the way, 11 points and 7 rebounds. Oregon with a 6-point lead. Its largest lead was at 8 when it started the game. 8 to nothing. This game's going to overtime. We can, Triple. We can spend half time at the Bill Nev Hot Springs. I'm just glad you figured out that Reese Davis and Reese Dixon Waters are two different people. 
Here's Bona back on the floor, driving into the lane, and for a lot of contact, count the basket. How is that not a foul? Adem Bona, who is a freshman from Nigeria. Don't encourage the refs to call more fouls, please. We've had enough already. We've had 16 called here in the first 16 minutes. Send them to the hot springs. Maybe Bagby. Entry pass to Ware. At the side of the great, backboard. Great defense, Bona. Bona's got to find a way to make a positive impact here. Take some of the pressure off the perimeter guys. Playing good defense without fouling. Here's Clark penetrating. Missed the layup. And Ware. Oh, well, well. Bailey took the ball away and helps him up. As a foul is called as the season goes along. Now, sometimes they're good right from the start. But again, he was without three key players in that first meeting with the UCLA. They've won four of five, six of eight. They have wins over a top 10 Arizona team, USC during that stretch. And right now they've got a five-point lead over number seven, UCLA. And the teams that they've lost to at Colorado. And then they lost at uh, Arizona. They lost at UCLA. And this guy, this young man here, Kalel Ware. Where's Ware? I mean, he's here now, but he wasn't here early on. And with the ability of him to come along and make a positive contribution. And while the press has not resulted in any steals for Oregon, it takes time off the clock, makes the Bruins reset. They've been looking for Kalal Ware to, to be consistent and play with fire. Fire, yeah. Passion. Energy. And he is tonight, six points, four rebounds. Bona did a good job, Ware did, that time defensively on him. That's Kalal Ware that we're all hoping and waiting for. Industriousness, enthusiasm. Do you love what you're doing? Are you willing to work at it? Are you willing to be the first guy to practice every day, the last guy to leave? To be in that weight room with Cliff Spiller, the new strength and conditioning coach, he's got a lot of pressure on him. He's taken over for a couple of legends. Cliff has spent 10 years in the NBA. So his reverse layup is good. Gurrier with a great find, and the lead is up to eight, matching the largest of the night for the Ducks. And this supremely conditioned team playing with Spark. Singleton for three, Whoa. and he hits it. David Singleton, that's the first made three for the Bruins tonight. He is the number two three-point shooter in the Pac-12. And he's... Seventh place all time in Pac-12 Conference of Champions threes. Behind the leader, Todd Lichty, the Stanford legend. Soares gets deep into the paint. Boy, he's played well tonight. Seven points, a couple of assists. He, he doesn't need to turn to the UCLA bench and flex. <laughs> that, that's not a real good idea. I mean, just, you know, Get back on defense and guard somebody, get a rebound. Soros, he, he's one of the nicest guys. He, he, he comes over and says hello to not just us every game, to the officials. He'll talk to all the officials when they come on the floor. And they're going to count the basket for Bailey. And it looks like it was on Soros. That's uh, his first. And so a three-point chance for Amari Bailey. Waldo Soros, a first-generation American. His parents from Cape Verde, the island just off of Senegal in the eastern Atlantic. A historical place for all the wrong reasons. But Kalel Ware, I mean, if he played like this every game, it, that would be a, a, a totally different story for not only himself, but for the team as well. Dana Altman, you know, he was just incredible in terms of his passion, his energy and everything. Today, you know, he's always barking, here we go, here we go. But he, he kept talking today about breaking the Bruins' rhythm, getting to what's next. Where's your energy? Where's your focus? Keep playing. Be ready. Set the tone of this game. And finally, Dante, Will Richardson, they've done that today. And the rest of the guys are coming along. Soros three, no good. Hawkes tracks down the ball in the corner. Nearing a minute to go in the first half, the UCLA ball down five. Waldo Soares is not a natural classic shooter. He's got to learn that, okay, if he makes one. Uh -oh, Official Amari. timeout. No, Amari's hurt. Ouch. Ouch. Oh, no. And it was the foot that uh, was a problem for him during that stretch where he missed games. And that injury was when somebody stepped on him. Now, Tyler Lesher, the fantastic trainer. 
just looked like he landed awkwardly on the court. Huh? Met, medic, run that back, please. Oh, we're in live action. Yeah, he's going to go back to the locker room. Yeah. Boy, that's that's a big loss. If, even for the last minute of the first half, not having his offense out there, as Campbell misses badly. Don't go out on a limb, please. So watch the right ankle here. I, yeah, yeah, he rolls that ankle. Huh? Did it land on Soar's foot? I Couldn't didn't tell look like from it. that angle. You got the duck over here looking for a mate, I think. Go so watch the game. Here's Dante. Pass broken up by Etienne. Yeah, saved by play. Campbell. Back at the end. Maybe the best play of his career. So oh, Dante. <laughs> he could have he could have sent that one out of the arena, but he kept it in play wisely. And it's Ducks basketball. He could have sent it over to Mark Few's hometown, Cresswell. He blocked that with his elbow. <laughs> but please, in follow. You know, think of it as peanut butter. Think of it as valuable property. Just grab that ball. Don't send it into the crowd. He didn't. He kept it in play. <laughs> Only because the backboard was there. <laughs> oh, and a turnover by the Ducks. So about a two second difference and the game and shot clocks here at the end of the first half this is the type of game that ucla will play a lot uh, up in corvallis the other day they led they just crushed them but this is a different this is a different level right here here's tiger campbell one for four he was one for five in a win at oregon state the other night Shot clock at eight, game clock at nine. Great defense, Perrier. On the switch, Campbell gets oh the basket, God. though, with three seconds to go. Push the ball. Three-quarter court. Oh, just missed. And it's a drop, rebound, running the floor, and finally Dante, the epitome of what it means to grow into an incredible, ineffable opportunity. What do we got? 20 minutes to write history. Where's Kuznard? Yeah, Kuznard did not have a field goal in that first half. Bailey had eight points to lead UCLA. Dante with 11, eight rebounds, two blocks. Will Richardson, three, no good. And this is Jaime Hawkins was one for six from the floor. Tiger Campbell was two for five. They were able to win the other night with those two guys not being great offensively. Might need more production from those two. Don't go out on a limp. Nate Biddle trying to overcome foul trouble. Some tough calls against him. Mari Bain is so strong in the post. Adem Bono only played five minutes in that first half. He got in foul trouble. Nuba, his replacement, only played about five minutes as he got in foul trouble. Bono with the basket there. Well, they thought they blocked it and still went in. <laughs> Shades of Robin Jones against Chicago, 1977. We all remember that. There's Dante working on bonus spinning and couldn't get the up and under move. He's so much bigger than a damn bonus. And finally, Dante just got to get that ball and just lay it up or throw it down. Turnaround jumper won't fall from Jaquez. He continues to struggle from the floor. One for seven. He's five for six at the line. Oregon needs to create separation early on, not even close. I mean, Kuznard has been so good. He's 0 for 4 tonight. Peterson. That's what's frustrating. Dana uh, Altman's pulling his hair out over there. Nick Sullivan's already done that. There's Tiger Campbell and UCLA back in front. How can, you, how can you come out at home with this sold-out crowd in this magnificent building and, and not be on fire. Let's go. I'm sure that wasn't the intent. We have a UCLA foul. Well, what, what was the intent then? Hawkeye is picking up the first. And if you can't deliver on your intent, what are you doing? Please. Inbound to Soares. Bodying up on Bailey, who commits the foul. That's two on Bailey. Two quick fouls on UCLA. And Soares will go to the line. Amari Bailey is wiry strong, the way that Jamal Wilkes was wiry strong. You would never accuse Jamal of having spent his life in the weight room, but he was working on his game. Speaking of UCLA greats, 
What did you think of the scene on Tuesday night? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar handing the ball to LeBron James for breaking the scoring title. It was incredible in all aspects. And, and then in typical 2023, LeBron, I mean, remarkable, incredible, empty the thesaurus. <laughs> and then the Lakers lost the game. Hmm. You were, think about how long that scoring well t title held up. You were in your prime of your NBA career playing against Kareem when it was set. Right. Well, LeBron wasn't born when Kareem <laughs> set the record. It was close because <laughs> the record stood 39 years. He's 38. Right, he wasn't born when the record stood. But only seven players have ever held that title. And all time only happens one time and I, I, I was there virtually and what a what a ceremony what a moment good hands by Biddle getting the deflection and then a strip by Richardson Hawkes thought he was foul numbers for the Ducks Kuzner takes it himself and they're gonna call a foul on Bona that's three on him I have never seen Darren Savino move quicker than him getting up off that bench with a non-call it's Jaime Hawkins or Sean Penn, one of the two, can't get to the free throw line. But now Kuznard, he, I mean, he's a scorer. And he's got to come out and realize, look, I've got to make every shot I get. He's got one point. Oh, for four. Already? And that point came early on, but now he's got two. So he just doubled his total. And on the season, he's averaging 12 points per game. It's only his 12th game play. Richard Sr. He had knee surgery at, at the start of the season. Yep. And it, the fact that he's back, I mean, that is an uh, incredible testament to Clay Jameson and to Cliff Spiller. Both have been mentioned five times on the broadcast. Kuznar gets the second free throw. Bona, by the way, to the bench. Nuba, who's got three fouls as well, he checks in. We saw Mac Etienne, who's the third string center for eight minutes or so in that first half. I can't help it if you take health for granted. Not sure what that means, but here's Duba. Jalen Clark was quiet in that first half. Four points. Soar's doing a remarkable job off the ball. Hawkes. Campbell missed the throw to Montez. Boy, Hawkes is good. such a good rebounder. He finds it's, a way. It's not how big you are, it's how big you play. It's not how high you jump, it's where you are and when you jump. And Dante does not have good court vision from that low left block. Oh. Could have called an offensive <laughs> foul. Forearm shiver. Richardson short, so he's two for eight. One for five for three. So both Kuznard and Richardson struggling, yet they have the one-point lead right now. The ugly game will favor UCLA. And they have learned to embrace the pressure, the responsibility of being in these huge games. Campbell, and that's Mick Cronin. Missing another one, three for eight now, but an offensive rebound. Singleton, deep look at it, nothing but net. David Singleton with his second three. He's got the only threes on the night for UCLA. UCLA is not a three-point shooting team other than Singleton. A Tiger will make an occasional one. Jaime, an occasional one. This is where the Ducks are now finding themselves in trouble. Jump ball, and we'll go to UCLA. Good team for you always. I got my shirt, and I wear this proudly every single day. We are the Conference of Champions. We are all about inclusivity, diversity, and equity. Jamel Hill is coming in to be a big keynote speaker at the end of the month. Everything going on, trying to make the world a better and brighter place. And for more Black History storytelling and coverage, stream the Black History Always collection on ESPN+. Plus. Steal and deflection. Great defense by Kuznard. Great recovery as it looked like Hawkes was going to have an easy dunk. So I spent the day in the day spa with Neil Everett today, and we were talking tremendous recovery by Kuznard after the careless turnover by the Ducks. But how about a quick shout-out to Ahmad Rashad, who was born in Portland, Grew up in Tacoma, comes here as an All-America football player, fourth overall pick in the NFL draft, four Pro Bowls, kick ball. And Ahmad also played in the NBA. So uh, just an incredible force of nature and, and just 
such a, a mentor, a leader, a friend, always encouraging, always positive, and that radiant, effervescent, exuberant smile that just lights up the universe. Thank you, Ahmad, for our lives. Back cut. Here's Campbell, UCLA by two. <laughs> Tiger threw it off of <laughs> Nuba so he can get it back. <laughs> Knocked away by Oregon. Oh, the Ducks are getting a lot of hands on basketballs here in the second half. A lot of deflections. But they but they have no offense in the second half. No, they don't have a field goal. They're all That's for what four. I said. They don't have any offense. I mean, that's sort of that was the I nature was of helping the game. you by giving some <laughs> stats to back up your point, trying to be a good partner as hmm. Hakez gets the jumper. Hmm. I was on the phone with Joe. Lonardi? Is that his name? You were literally? You were? Well, I was talking to him. I'm Apologizing? Not sure. <laughs> for what? <laughs> Yeah. We're waiting to see who was in a foul or we got a help ball or just knocked out of bounds. I wanted to send him a shirt. Yeah, out of bounds, Oregon ball. Go ahead, finish. So, what was your conversation like with Joe? Well, it was a one way conversation. Him yelling at you? <laughs> no. So, you were talking. Are you going to tell us or no? Are you teasing us? I here? was explaining how the Conference of Champions should have eight or nine teams in there. Whoa, Kuznar, not even close. He's 0 for 5 and 0 for 3 from 3. UCLA ball, Oregon still without a basket. Five minutes gone by. They do have a couple of free throws here in the, the half. Offensive foul. No, no, they're going to call defending the screen foul. But the Ducks need Will Richardson and Infale Dante to stand up and say, I'm going to tell you how this is going to be. You got to have Will Richardson penetrating, floaters, layoffs, and finally Dante throwing it down. This is a critical, critical game. And now he's starting to get going now. Back-to-back -back buckets, and the lead is six for the Bruins. Well, you just knew at some point. Absolutely, he was going to get untracked. Just a matter of time. This is the land of volcanoes. Five active ones here in the 33rd state in our union. Richardson driving, and his pass is picked off by Singleton. That pass should have gone to Dante. That's where the defenders had rotated off. Him. And now the Bruins just start swelling in confidence. You ever stood on the banks of the Santiam River this time of year? That's a swelling river there. Marquez. And way off that time. Loose ball out of bounds off of Kuznard will stay with the Bruins. The shot clock at nine. So while the Ducks were doing all the pushing and getting the position and advantage in the first half, right now it's all UCLA. And, and the Ducks have no offense. No field goals. 9 nothing run by UCLA over the last three minutes. Shot clock at four. Campbell around the screen. Jumper no good. And here comes Will Richardson. No transition opportunities for the Ducks. The Bruins in perfect position at all times. They're so, so, well, yeah, they're so used to playing in these types of games. Yep. In big games, especially guys like Hawkes and Campbell, they thrive in the big games. Go back to that Final Four team from a couple but, years ago. But Amari Baylor as well. And he, this guy, he, he lives for big moments. But he's a freshman, hadn't been in these moments, at least at this level yet. Yeah, I'd rather have talent than experience at any time. Hakez driving, falling away, and it's good. And he has just moved into the top 20 in scoring at UCLA with that basket, and the lead is eight. And he's already in the top 20 in career rebound. And now he's one of 10 players in UCLA history who have ever done that, both top 10 in rebounds and career points. And they're going to call a foul here on Nuba. That is four on Nuba. Will Mick Cronin go back to Etienne? Or... No. He's bringing Jalen Clark in, so they're going to go really small here. No, they're going to bring Bone in. Okay, they, they, they took Kamari Bailey out. So here are the players, top 20 all-time in scoring and rebounding. There's a lot of legendary names on that list, including uh, yours. Kareem, Volko Bannon brothers, J.R. Henderson, who's now living in Japan with a Japanese surname, David Greenwood, Marcus Johnson, legends all around. Don McLean, the career-leading scorer in the history of the Conference of Champions. 
shocking how his number is not in the rafters at Pauley Pavilion. And you've been saying that Jaime Hawkes is, is starting to look more and more like Sean Penn. There's a lot of guys on that list who are actors. You, Marcus Johnson, and Kareem have all appeared in movies as an offensive fight with their wings illuminated by the ray of sunshine that Bill Shonley always was. He coined the term Rip City. Jim Barnett, who was involved in the coinage of that phrase, Jim Barnett made the basket that Bill Shonley barked out Rip City spontaneously, and it became a legendary term in this incredible state. Thank you, Bill Shonley, for your life. What a day. We will never forget you, Bill. Incredible broadcaster, wonderful gentleman. A ray Long of time. sunshine and hope. Beautiful pass. Bona Go with down. the dunk. The lead is up to 10. It's a 13 to nothing run by UCLA. So they just played shout here during the last timeout, which is the rallying cry. Oh. Kuznar finally with the basket. That's the first for him and the first for Oregon this half. That's eight minutes in to get your first basket. That won't get it done. Lena Altman just beside himself over there. Mick Cronin. What the poise of the winning coach right now. An eternity to go. Here's Bartholomew. Where? He can hit that. Not that time. Rebound by Hawkins. Great timing on the call. <laughs> Here's a lob. Oh, missed the jam. But Hawkins always right there. He just plays hard. That's why he gets so many rebounds. Mick Cronin was saying it. The numbers are better, but he's playing the same way. He just plays so hard. Everybody plays hard if they're any good at all. He's got Hawk 10 rebounds tonight. Hawkins plays smart. A three for Hawkins. He's up to 18 points and 10 rebounds. He has taken over this game. And he focuses on what he can do. One of the great Bruins of all time. The numbers back that up. So does the visual evaluation. So does the physical presence. Not saying something coming from you. For you to say that, that he's one of the all-time great Bruins, is a very strong statement as Ware gets the basket. Top 10 in scoring and rebounding? Please. Keep in mind, too, when there's who's not on that list is Sidney Wicks. And, but Sidney really only played two years. He was on three championship teams, but in his first year, Coach Woodman was a good Hawk has again drills it. He has come alive in the second half. 21 points, 10 rebounds. At halftime, he had one basket. He had five rebounds and seven points at halftime. We've seen this before. Please. He has outscored Oregon by six by himself. UCLA has outscored the Ducks 23 to 8 here in the second half. They lead by 12, looking for more, and a foul here on the Ducks. <laughs> yeah, when the guys going for competitive greatness has has separated the Bruins right now, and uh, the Ducks are in real trouble. So Hawkins is not just the scoring; he had five rebounds at halftime. He's already got five in the second half. His last four games, he's got 47 rebounds in five games. The last four, 47 rebounds. Okay, so that's more than 10 a game. Here's Jaquez backing down. Soros is fouled. What do you think about Jaime Jaquez at the next level? As in every level, it's who you play with. I mean, that was Coach Wooden's recruiting pitch. It's so why you come to UCLA. It's not how good you are. It's how good your teammates are. If he gets on the Warriors, he gets on uh, Kevin Durant's team. That's Phoenix now. If he gets on the Celtics, if he gets on Milwaukee, we'll be fine. If he goes to one of the bad teams in the NBA where they just go one on one the whole time, then he's going to have trouble, as everybody has trouble. But how about Mick Cronin and what he's been able to do? First, let's talk about our big Monday doubleheader. We've got Miami and North Carolina. It's a big yeah. game for UNC, just like tonight's a big game for Oregon. They're all big tournament. games, but especially this time of year with three weeks to go in the regular season. Texas and Texas Tech to follow on ESPN and the app. Well, how about Texas? They, they, they change coaches in midstream, and it's like, you know, changing your horse. And uh, all of just keeps going. Playing really good players. Playing better. Oh, really? <laughs> that helps. <laughs> Here's Dante, double down low, trying to go with Bona. Get him to pick up that fourth foul, and Bona gets the rebound. This is Bruin basketball historically. 
quicker to the ball. Doesn't matter, you know, how, how fast you are, how you make the decision to where you're going to go, and how quickly you can do that. Quickness, balance, mental skill, not a physical skill. Campbell can't get it. Rebound Dante. So you see that run 21 to 4. Here's Kuznar driving, gets the layup. They need, obviously, a lot more out of him. He does have two of the three field goals for the Ducks here in the second half. But as much as UCLA has dominated this second half, that has not deterred the students behind us. They are fired up. There's Campbell weaving through the lane out to Hawkes, who now has 23 points, 10 rebounds. Working on Soares, not able to get it to fall. One and done for UCLA. Kuznard pull up three, hit it! Kuznard starting to heat up. The Ducks back with a nine. Just as you had said, the game was over. You just know it was only a matter of time. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, the, the exact science of predictions. <laughs> now Bona is caught in no man's land out there. And Clark lost the ball out of bounds. Oregon's got it. Kuznard slicing, dicing like Kuznard. Not from Coos Bay. But Kuznard's ability to get out in transition. The defense just backs up. He is letting it fly. And of all the players that I see today, Kuznard reminds me the most of Donovan Mitchell. I was just going to say the same thing. I love that comparison. Right. Uh, how can you say you were just going to say well, that? Well, I just saw Donovan Mitchell last night. They looked very similar. What were you doing last night in New Orleans? <laughs> What's that last night? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> Where are we right now? <laughs> Shot clock we, three. We're in the we're in the Willamette Valley. They haven't signaled yet whether that's good or not. Let's see. Waiting for it. No, they wave it off. Oh, they wave it off. Vic Cronin, he wants traveling violation. That is on Bona. That's his force. He got Bona and Nuba each with four fouls. He's going to go back to Nuba, not Etienne here. Doesn't matter if Kenneth Nuba fouls out. They got three guys over there. You know. Bona is the critical one. You, you keep him for as long as you can. The other guys, they get sacrificed for the cause. Good hands by Nuba. Got the deflection and out of bounds off of Soros. Well, Kenneth Nuba but, but was a redshirt senior from Nigeria. Well, he's an excellent guy and a wonderful student and just absolutely outstanding in every way. This, Le learning how to play basketball. The crowd doesn't like it at all, but the deflection bone coming into play here for the Bruins. More on the deflection bone. That is a real thing. People wondering <laughs> what Bill's talking about. We'll, we'll show you that. Here's Dante into the paint. Goes right into the chest foul. of Offense. Nuba. No, Tony's going to call it on the ground. Wow. And will lose you for the rest of the game. I love Oregon. What so, a place to hit. <laughs> UCLA is so beautiful today. UCLA leading by nine. And again, this is important in the big picture because if the Bruins win with Arizona getting upset by Stanford, UCLA would have a two-game lead. They still have to play Arizona the last game of the year in Los Angeles. They lost to Arizona in Tucson. Another deflection that time by Clark. Clark. The anticipation from the weak side. The post-entry passes to Enfale Dante have done him no favors tonight. Singleton Discipline Confidence of David Singleton Never out of control Never feels the pressure So you got Etienne out there for Bona Who's got four fouls and Kenneth Nuba Who fouled out Campbell going through the lane And what a recovery By Will Richardson Clark Fouled there. on the putback counted Jalen Clark we talked about Hawkes rebounding Jalen Clark averages About seven boards per game The lead back to 11 UCLA is attacking the rim, and in Fale, Dante is coming, coming for so many of those shots. But that leaves the that leaves the defensive rebound totally helpless for the Ducks. And this guy, Jalen Clark, is just spectacular in every way. His character, his demeanor, this guy's got it. He was an all-defensive player last year, got a chance to make, he's, he's probably defensive player of the year, certainly in, in the, the conversation country. for that.
in yeah. the country and the conference of champions. The job that Coloco did last year. Foul here on you thinking somebody's going to be there or thinking something's going to happen. And then so it's, it doesn't happen. It sounds like a weird deadhead saying to me. You're sadly confused. Those words don't go together. That's true. All deadhead That's sayings are weird as Kuznar gets the first free throw. Now just, just examine Kuznar's balance and the focus and the concentration. And the persistent sense oh, of attack. Coming. This guy's got it. And he can play in any game at any level. He's keeping him in the game right now. Maybe down 20 without him. Sure wish he would have started the game this way. <laughs> that sort of helps. <laughs> no field goals for him in the first half. He has three baskets here in the second half. Six and a half to go in the game. Hard screen set by Etienne. This is going to be an Oregon foul. Well, Soar is just running right through it, which is fine, but you're down 10. Dana Altman, he wants a physical tone here. Playing at home, you got a raucous crowd to support you. You got Tuba Mike leading the band up there, rocking in the free world. But they can't score. Offense wins. How much of that, though, is what UCLA is doing defensively? Here's Clark. They got it. Jalen Clark with the triple. A rare triple for Jalen Clark. But he's just a winner. I mean, he, he's like Casey Jones. He's like Russell Westbrook. He's just a, a, an absolute team player willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done. Have you seen the new Bill Russell movie? Not yet. You asked me that in the first half. Clark with the steal on the other end. And he's fouled by Richardson. Boy, Jalen Clark makes such a difference because of his length and athletic ability on the defensive end. Third foul on Richardson. So he gets a deflection and a steal. Jalen Clark, he, he leads the Conference of Champions in steals. And he gets like three a game. He is 34 assist, uh, 34 steals away from the, the season steal record at UCLA. And the Pac-12. So we got a huge game tomorrow. Arguably the biggest women's game of the season to date with LSU and South Carolina squaring off two Eastern tomorrow. Super Bowl Sunday on ESPN and the app. I love the way that the women's game at the top has moved. Moved to new teams. It was always UConn. It was always Stanford. It was always Tennessee. Now you got fresh blood in there with LSU. Kevin, uh, Kim Mulkey, excuse me. How about, you know, a couple of years ago at Arizona in the yeah. championship game? Yeah. UCLA's got a really good program. Corey Close, head coach. A team and Oregon. program here with Kelly Gray. Yep, they've been, you know, for a long time a Final Four team. How about Utah? The, the Lady Utes, man. <laughs> That's a real squad. In transition, Clark fouled. He'll go back to the line. And UCLA start to pull away with five and a half to go. The Bruins running the Ducks out of their own building here, and everybody just stunned. Well, David you, Fry, Rob Mullins, Tinker, you Johnny Kilkenny, Diane Kilkenny, Pat, you, Stephanie. You, you pointed out at the beginning of the second half that the energy wasn't there for Oregon. Is that the biggest difference, or is something else that stand out to you here about how momentum has completely changed in the second half? Mick Cronin has taught these guys to believe that they can do anything. And that's the job of the coach, to breathe life and light into individuals, into the group dynamic. And when Mick Cronin took over, this is his fourth year, this program, the spirit was broken. And now they believe they can do anything, and they're playing like it tonight. And Mick Cronin's statistical accomplishments, yet again, another 20-win season for the Bruins. 12 of the last 13 years, they have won under Mick Cronin. Only four of them at UCLA. They have won 20 games. The only time they didn't was they lost the last game. Another steal by May Hawkins. <laughs> and a flush. The lead is up to 18. Think about it. It was 8 to nothing Oregon to start this game. The Ducks have 40 points since, and they trail by 18. UCLA, just a dominant defensive performance in the second half. 
The Bruins are playing like true champions. Win every possession. Give that to given that this, for all intents and purposes, in a lot of ways, was a must win for Oregon. They're all must wins. But it magnifies how impressive this performance was by UCLA. Well, the desperation in nature that we would expect the Ducks to bring. They had that for the first point. Yeah, the scientific exactness if, if of the Well, look, if you're if you finish the year with a loss tonight is 11 losses. If you even win out and then don't win the Pac-12 tournament, you finish with 12 losses. That's a lot of losses for a team to make the NCAA tournament. How many losses does Kentucky have? I'd have to look. Not the how, top how about of North Carolina? How about Duke? They're all going to make it. Oregon still might make it. There's a great chance they the Ducks should. could win the rest of their games. And look, they're good enough and they're talented enough, and we've seen it. The big one was obviously here against Arizona, where if they get hot for three nights in Las Vegas, they can win the Pac-12 tournament. If they played like they played against Arizona, if they played like they played against USC, they'd win the championship. Not only are the conference of champions, but they're the whole thing. But what you're seeing tonight is where really kind the of excellence of UCLA is what we're seeing tonight. But also the inconsistency of Oregon. Both have really showed up in this The game. roller coaster that has been a nightmare for Dana Altman. Fortunately, his grandson Carter was here today at the end of practice to lift his spirits. Here's Nard with a three. Too little, too late. But he's had a great second half, just hasn't had any help. And the way that the Bruins keep moving that ball. I'm out of UC Baseball Stadium right next to Oxen Stadium next door. And Neil was the master of ceremonies. He was the guest speaker. He was the honoree, and it was a fabulous time. Neil and I, we spent the afternoon at the day spa right there at the public market at 5th Street, and it was uh, quite the time we, as we were preparing for tonight's epic confrontation. Thank you, Neil, for my life. And he better hurry up because Sports Center is coming up next. I don't think he's anchoring tonight. Who do you have uh, winning the Super Bowl, by the way? You got a pick? That's tomorrow, right? Right. Yes, it's Super Bowl Sunday, today's Saturday. I'm, I'm picking overtime. I have friends on both teams. So. You, listen, you say that every year. Bartholomew with a three. Oregon not done yet. Back within 12. We'll spare the audience. Bill's alleged prediction for tomorrow's game. And then Richardson knocking it out of bounds. UCLA ball. I don't make predictions. I, I, I just have who I want to win. Who do you I, want to win? Then? I want overtime. I want the ball in the air at the final buzzer to decide the fate of the known world one more time. Push the ball if you're the Bruins. Clark getting it across. Three minutes to go. 12-point lead. If you're the Bruins, just keep running. Keep running, keep moving, keep passing the ball. Ducks are not even going to foul here. Not yet. You got plenty of time. Six nothing. Plenty of time. They're down twelve with under three to go. Well, you get to stop here though. Yeah, and make five straight threes. Shot clock at three. Clark in the lane. No, but Hawkes is there. Wow, what a night for Hawkes on the glass. Twelve rebound rebounds. Forty nine in his last four games. Rebounding is playing catch with yourself and understanding where the ball is going. Okay, there's the deck. So you get the Talk offensive out and the will. You get the offensive <laughs> rebound in the three. And you bring it out and you give it to your lead player who once again shows that he is just as important as anybody in the conference of champions. By the way, that's Dante's first basket of the second half. He he was all over the place in the first half, but not much of a factor at all in the second half. And the sad thing for Oregon, people who love basketball in life, is that he, he's just worked so hard. And, and Thursday night against Arizona when they won here a couple weeks ago, he was unstoppable. And he just he terrified the other team. Beautiful pass. Shot clock violation. Boy, I thought it hit the rim, didn't it? After no. the great first half against USC in both games. And, uh, lost one at USC. Barely hung on to win at Pauley Pavilion. So it's going to be UCLA ball with 18 to shoot. Because as we showed you, it did hit the rim. But look, UCLA's 21 and 4, 12 and 2. They haven't been 
this good in terms of the record this late in the season in 15 years. They haven't won a regular season championship in a decade. 2013. They're one step closer to doing that with a win tonight. They're always picked to win first, but Arizona and Oregon always have something to say about it. And so the, the Bruins have come in here tonight and just uh, thrown it down in the Ducks' face. You know what's so interesting, too? You talk about Mick Cronin. We remember when Steve Alford was let go in the search. There were so many names that were thrown out there. And Mick Cronin's name, we didn't hear for the longest time. And you look back and you think, they hit a home run with Mick Cronin. He's led them to a Final Four, a Sweet 16. It, they're, they're recruiting just as well as they were doing before. They're getting McDonald's All-Americans, but they're also getting grinders. They're getting these guys that fit what he did at Cincinnati, as well as getting these star players that maybe he couldn't get at Cincinnati. The best deals are the ones you never hear about until they announce them. That's why the predictions are so uh, ridiculous and often inaccurate but Mick Cronin who has brought a level of accountability and responsibility to this team and he, he is on these guys he drives them he's not their friend he's got a job to do and they have responded I mean a lot of these guys not a lot now but, but there's still a few that were on Steve Alford's team before yeah, yeah. Jaime Clark and, and, and Tiger. And Tiger. I mean, that, that's the core of the offensive attack. And you bring in Amari Bailey. So glad that his foot's okay. You bring in Bona. I mean, these are top, top level recruits. A minute to go. Oregon one backing one off, one not one fouling. One one Oregon will drop to 15 and 11, 9 and 6 in conference play. Again, still plenty of time to. to Finish in the top four and get a bye. Just wonder. So who gets the bone tonight? In terms of the deflections, I don't know who had the most as Campbell missed out. I feel like Jalen Clark or Hawkes maybe had the most deflections. That sound right to you? With with this team, it's never about individual statistics. But if you're asking me who, who, who gets the, the well, deflection you're, look, bone. You're, and, you're the guy who, who loves bones. You're, you're the guy who loves growling and mastodon roaring. Oh, the guy who loves meteors hitting the earth. Yeah. 29.5 remaining. Jalen Clark at the free throw line to try to close this out. Puddles has had enough of the Oregon mascot. The duck is done. Yeah, he's leaving. He's going out to the river. Look for some slugs. Heard from Salmon on my incoming trip here today. Couldn't work out a connection. Was the front end? So remember, critically important, it's the margin of victory that is taken into account, which is ludicrous. Very ace three. Oh, yeah. six point game. Others won't have to live a life of honor. Now this is where Jaime's got to look up over the top of Luke War. And Luke War, I mean, he's 6'11", 7 feet tall. They get it in bounds. Oregon's got a foul now. They didn't get the chance. Clark Great gets play. it ahead to Singleton. Great play by Jalen Clark. And they end up fouling one of the best free throw shooters in the country with 9.9 left. That was handled beautifully by well, the Bruins. Well, I love it when you guys pass the ball first. to wear the clock down as opposed to okay i'm just gonna hold it so i can go to the free throw line please win the game so david singleton we, we talked you know, talk about the importance of guys like Hawkins and, and campbell david singleton's 24 years old he's a fifth year senior he's a key bench player and he can win a game for you he can get hot and he can score rebound and defend what else is there the only time Mick Cronin with UCLA did not go to the tournament is when they didn't have the tournament. And they had won 11 of their last 14 games. Yeah. That was his. It's all about leadership. Always. Success is about leadership. Failure is about leadership. This is a great win for UCLA. 70-63. to 63. The Bruins have a two-game lead atop the standings over.